Sarah gets ready for her practice. She is a tennis player and is adept at it. With every shot, her determination to win gets stronger. Colton is a rude high school brat who doesn't care about anybody but himself. He is always with his two ignorant friends, and the trio is the biggest bully in the school. Sarah has been practicing for quite a while and misses one shot. Her coach advises her to anticipate the ball. She concentrates on her match and starts again but soon slips and falls. Colton and his friends have just arrived at the court and witness Sarah slipping. They start laughing and poking fun at her. The coach asks them to keep walking. Both his friends leave, but Colton stands there staring at Sarah. Coach asks him to go too. After getting a second glance from the coach, Colton makes his way out of there. Sarah gets up and dusts off her clothes. She is not very happy about the boy's remarks and takes that as a negative reinforcement to slay her next shot. Her coach looks pleased and calls her and all the other players for a hustle. Ashley, Colton's sister who plays tennis with Sarah, apologizes for her brother's behavior. Their coach gathers them to talk about the upcoming Clairville tennis program. It is an invitation-only camp held over the summer. Those that are chosen will be playing with the best of players, even pros. The coach has called in a favor and asked them to see his players at the end of the season. Sarah and others get excited at the news. The coach reminds them that it is going to take a lot of effort and dedication. He considers all of them good players but emphasizes on practicing. Colton reaches home at dinner. His parents and sister Ashley have already started eating. Colton's mother expressed they were worried about him. Colton doesn't bother to reply. His dad asks him about his report card, but he is busy snatching the bowl of salad from Ashley. His father gives him a bland warning to be more respectful. His mom is concerned that no college will accept him if Colton doesn't get his grades up. Ashley asks for their permission to stay out till 11 tonight, as she is going to the hockey game. Colton is going to play. His parents wish to go too, but Colton snaps at them, saying no, they won't. He ignores his mother's protest that they want to see their son play. Ashley makes it clear that she is going there because it is the last game of the season, not because of him. His mother tries to convince him, but he loses his cool and storms off the dining table without finishing his food. His dad asks him where he is going. He replies to the game and slams the door behind him. The game has started, and the stadium is packed. Sarah joins Liz and Ashley. Liz jokingly says Ashley's brother is handsome. Sarah thinks otherwise and adds that she can't think about him without gagging. She apologizes to Ashley that she didn't mean it, but Ashley doesn't mind as she knows how obnoxious Colton can be. After all, she lives with him. Colton's team lost the match, and Colton is furious. He blames others for not giving their best. Eddie, one of their classmates, congratulates Colton on playing well. But Colton doesn't acknowledge him and keeps blaming others. Sarah and her friends are passing by and see Eddie with Colton. She asks him what he is doing. Colton puts his arm around Eddie's shoulder and says he is hanging out with them. Sarah shrugs and starts to leave when Colton calls her name and mocks her by saying she has some fancy footwork, even after her coach spent so much time teaching her. Colton's friends laugh at his remark. Sarah retorts by saying she didn't spend as much time as he did tonight. Unable to take the jibe, he asks her to get lost. Sarah's mom comes back home in the morning and finds Sarah cooking breakfast. Sarah asks her how her work was. She tells her about the party at her restaurant. She then asks Sarah how her practice is going. Sarah says it's fine, but her regular enthusiasm is missing. Her mom picks on it and asks if the coach is giving her a hard time. Sarah dismisses it, saying the Clairville people are coming to their school, and her coach thinks she has a great chance of getting invited. Her mom agrees because she thinks her daughter is the best player on the team, and she is indeed. She is confident in her skills, but when she has to play in front of everybody, she gets nervous and is concerned that she'll mess up. At a cafe, Amy, a fellow worker, gets angry at Colton as he arrives because he is late for his shift. He gives a rude reply. She asks him to cover the register for her. Colton sees a customer approaching and declines, as he doesn't want to deal with the customer. But she convinces him to cover for her as she did the same for him. After he gives the customer's order, he looks at Amy, who is busy talking on the phone, and slips the money the customer gave into his pocket. Soon his two friends come and ask him to join them as they are bored. He removes his apron and without any consideration for Amy, leaves her to do his job again. The trio and Eddie plan to vandalize the church with spray paint. Colton hands a spray can to Eddie and asks him to do it if he wants to hang out with them. Somebody sees them destroying public property and calls the police. All of them run to avoid getting caught. Colton and Eddie hide behind the swings in a nearby park. The man who saw them vandalizing follows them to the park. Colton says he'll take care of him and suddenly attacks the man, punching and kicking him. The man lies on the ground, hurt, while Eddie and Colton run from there. The next day Colton's parents are talking about Colton. Ashley tells them that he came back home very late again, as he woke her up after hitting his foot against his weights. It is the second time in a row he has been coming home past midnight. Ashley complains that she can't wait till her curfew doesn't exist. 
Her mother asserts that Colton has a curfew. Since he chooses not to follow it, he will suffer the consequences. Hearing this, Ashley smirks. She has been waiting for this as Colton gets away with anything he does, but not this time. Ashley's dad is leaving to see if the vandalized wall of the church has been cleaned. Ashley asks about it, and her mother tells her that someone graffitied the church last night. The man who saw the four destroying the property turned out to be Mr. Cooper. She is perplexed as to why someone would do this. Ashley enters Colton's room to tell him they'll be leaving for the church in 10 minutes. But Colton impertinently drives her away. After everyone has left, Colton gets up to freshen up, steals some money from Ashley's cupboard, and goes to school. Liz meets up with Sarah and Dallin at school. She shares the news that they will be playing volleyball at next week's youth activity. Sarah gets tensed as her aim is not at all good. Her friends tease her about being a professional tennis player but not being good at a related sport. Sarah is not sure about tennis and volleyball being related. They have been told to make others join, especially those who haven't been to the church lately. Sarah knows this is pointing toward Colton, and she doesn't want to talk about that, but Liz recounts the incident. Last year they had a statue of Christ outside the church. It is not there anymore because Colton broke it on purpose. Sarah knew who did it and told Mr. Cooper. Colton was charged with vandalism and was made to do 200 hours of community service. Colton was so annoyed that he hasn't come to the church since. So they think of inviting Eddie, but Sarah thinks he will not come as he has been hanging out with Colton and his group. Dallin offers to talk to Eddie. Colton meets his gang outside school. He asks one of the girls if she has done his homework. She gives him the notebook with all the work done. Colton and Eddie are copying the homework when Dallin comes to talk to Eddie. But Colton interrupts and doesn't let Eddie talk to Dallin. When Dallin tells them about the volleyball match the next day and asks if Eddie will be willing to play with them, Colton answers on Eddie's behalf that he doesn't care. Eddie too, acts like the notorious group and ignores Dallin. Colton insults Dallin by calling him names and shouts at him to get out of there. Dallin leaves feeling humiliated. The next day everybody is enjoying the volleyball match when the ball is hit a little too far, and Colton's group, who are passing by, catches it. Instead of throwing it back as any normal person would do, Colton takes out his pocket knife and punctures the ball before throwing it back. The next day while Colton is getting ready for school, his parents walk in and want to talk to him about his friends. Instead, Colton asks his mom where his shirt is and goes to get it from the laundry. His parents are worried about their son's unruly behavior. When Colton returns, they talk to him about Eddie's mom calling and complaining about Colton's bad influence on her son. They confront him over puncturing the volleyball and disrupting the game, but he remains unfazed. They ask him why he gets his friends in trouble. Colton accuses his parents of blaming him rather than being supportive. Like always, he behaves disrespectfully with his parents and leaves for school. His parents look helplessly at him as he leaves. They don't know how to deal with their son's unruly behavior, which is getting worse day by day. Sarah and the other players are warming up. Coach Miller comes to ask if they're ready for tomorrow's match. Sarah doesn't seem enthusiastic, as she is more nervous than thrilled. She is tense about Clairville. Coach tries to pacify her by saying there is still time for that. Until then, he asks her to focus on what's next and not let the nervousness get the best of her. Colton is walking with Eddie talking about a party. Eddie is excited, but Colton asks him to relax as it is just a party. He confronts Eddie that his parents called Colton's parents. Eddie confesses his parents asked him where he was, and he told them. Colton gets furious and tells him not to tell his parents anything because it is not their business. Whatever Colton and his friends do remains inside the group. If their parents question them, they lie to get away from any trouble. He then gets a call from Blake asking him where he and Eddie are. He tells them they'll be there in five minutes. Colton also receives a call from home, but he ignores it. Colton's mom calls him again. This time he picks up. She asks him if he is coming to his sister's tennis game. Colton tries to dodge the question by saying it is Friday night. He usually hangs out with his friends during weekends. But Colton's mom is not in the mood to listen to any of his excuses, and reminds him that he promised to go to his sister's first match. But Colton hangs up the call saying whatever. At this point, Colton has stopped caring about any of his relationships, and their feelings. Sarah is nervously fiddling with her racket as her mother gets ready to leave. She apologizes to Sarah for not being able to attend her match as there is an emergency in the restaurant. Sarah assures her she'll be fine on her own. Her mom leaves after wishing her good luck. Colton's parents come to his room to talk to him again, but he has sneaked out of his house again. Feeling dejected that they have lost all control over their son, his dad slumps on the chair in Colton's room while his mom leaves. Colton's dad sees the spray can Colton had hidden under his clothes. He takes it out, looks at it, and immediately realizes what Colton has done. They call Mr. Cooper and apologize on behalf of their son. They are distressed because Colton has lost sight of what is right and what is not. It has been months since he visited a church. He makes fun of children who go to church. While his parents are worried sick of his behavioral changes, Colton is busy partying and drinking with his friends. Colton's parents have been praying for a change of heart for Colton, but nothing is working. Finally, they have turned to Mr. Cooper's help. Mr. Cooper asks them if they are familiar with the story of Saul before he became Paul. He was persecuting believers, threatening Christ's church until the Lord intervened. 
the Lord came to Saul and confronted him. After that, Saul changed his ways. Colton's mother asks what they can do for Colton. Mr. Cooper says they cannot force Colton to change, and God won't force him either. He hands them the Bible and prays that the Lord can touch his heart, so Colton will want to turn to the Lord and will want to change. After Mr. Cooper leaves, Colton's parents go to his room and pray for their son. At the party, Colton and the others are so drunk that they cannot think straight. Colton asks for a mobile phone, and Eddie gives him his phone. Colton then puts it in the blender and breaks it into pieces while all others laugh. Sarah is ready for her match. Her coach wishes her luck, and she is off to a great start. And she maintains it till the end, winning the game. Colton and his friend Blake drive to get more drinks. They are both drunk. At the same time, Sarah is also driving back home after the match is over. She calls her mom, but she is busy, so Sarah leaves her a message telling her she won the match and will soon be home. Blake, who is driving, can hardly keep his eyes open. Suddenly there is a flash of light and a loud crash. Then everything goes dark. Ambulance sirens can be heard everywhere. Colton is taken into emergency. Blake is also injured. Their car got into a head-on collision with Sarah's car. Sarah is badly wounded and taken to another room. Soon Colton's heart stops, and the machine shows no pulse. The doctors have to defibrillate. But even after several attempts, the doctors fail to resuscitate his heart. They start noting the time of passing when suddenly he wakes up with a gasp. While Colton was hanging between life and death, he had a flashback where all the things he had done flashed before his eyes. It was as if something big was still left for him to do. And his time on earth was not over yet. Colton opens his eyes after a few days. He is still in the hospital, and his sister Ashley is sitting beside him. She is relieved to see Colton conscious and goes to call their parents. Before leaving, she tells him that no matter how badly he treated her, she is glad he is okay. His parents rush inside to meet Colton. They tell him how worried they were because they thought they had lost him. He had stopped breathing. Colton asks him what happened to the car they hit. His parents tell him that Sarah was in the other vehicle, and she got hurt too. Colton looks guilty and turns his face to the other side. His parents leave to let him rest. Sarah, who is in the other room of the hospital, asks her mom if her friends Liz and Dallin can come there to see her. Her mother approves. At that moment, Dr. Pepper enters her room. He tells her that her knee requires surgery which will be done soon. Other injuries are minor, but for now, she has to go easy on her knee. She has to take rest, and with time the wound shall heal. The doctor also advises that she find herself another hobby, as tennis is out of the question until she recovers. At night Colton is woken up by the sound of someone sobbing. He gets off the bed and walks to the adjacent room, where Sarah lies on her bed sobbing. She asks him what he wants, and he tells her he wants to see how she is doing. Sarah cannot hold back her anger and asks him to leave. She loved playing tennis, and now her dream is ruined because of Colton. She presses the assistance button and asks the nurse to get Colton out of her room. She doesn't want to see the face of the man who ruined her life and dream. The next day Ashley comes to visit her brother in the hospital. Colton pretends to be asleep, but Ashley catches on to his farce. He asks her how she could tell. She proudly claims to be the best fake sleeper, so she can easily tell if someone is really sleeping or just faking it. She asks him what he is doing since it is boring to just lie on the bed. Colton tells her that he is thinking. He then asks her if she remembers the visions and dreams mentioned in the Bible and if they happen to people. She doesn't know for sure, but there is a possibility. After going through all the tests, the doctors give Sarah a green signal for her surgery. Dr. Pepper visits her and asks if she is ready. Sarah is nervous and asks if she has a choice. The doctor assures her she won't feel a thing during the operation. The nurse comes in to prepare Sarah for surgery. Colton's parents are watching their son from outside his room. The doctor has given his approval to take Colton home the next day. Colton's mom is worried, and asks her husband if what happened with Colton is the result of their prayers. Colton's dad doesn't know how to answer this since they never thought about how the Lord would intervene. But Colton's mom is thankful that their son is fine. They believe their son has been given a second chance. Sarah is out from surgery. She is still unconscious. Colton comes to meet her and sits beside her bed. He calls her name, but she is under anesthesia, so she cannot hear him. Regardless of that, he starts speaking to her. He just wanted to talk to someone about his divine experience when the medics were bringing him in. He felt a presence with him when he had left his body. He felt the presence talk to him, warning him to stop what he was doing. Colton has tears in his eyes as he says out loud these words, that he had been holding inside of him from the moment he gained consciousness in the hospital. Colton is full of guilt because what he saw was beyond his comprehension. When did he turn into someone like that? He saw all the bad things he had done and felt ashamed of his doings. He still doesn't remember if it was a dream, but to him, it felt real. He doesn't know what to do or whom to talk to. He cannot understand this himself. He cannot expect anybody else to understand him. Unable to say anything more, Colton wishes Sarah to get better soon and leaves. But he doesn't know that Sarah was awake this whole time and heard everything he just said. Sarah is back from the hospital. Her mother helps her settle down before telling her that Liz and Dallin called to ask if they can visit her. She looks at her broken racket and sighs as no matter how much she wants to play, she can do nothing about it. Colton is back at school and meets his friends there. His unruly friends haven't mended their ways and say that coming to school is better than being around his mom. 
Colton realizes how rude their comments sounded to other people. But to their surprise, Colton doesn't go along with their gibberish. Instead, he tells them he doesn't want to be left behind at school. Before his friends can say anything, Eddie distracts them. He is busy snatching homework from another kid, which creates a little commotion. Eddie then joins them. They tell Colton they will be going to a party that evening and ask him to come along. But Colton refuses, saying his arm still hurts. But his friends don't care and suggest the sling will earn him sympathy from women at the party. Colton asks them if they heard what happened in the emergency room. None of them cared about their friend who almost lost his life in the emergency room. The people he once called his friends suddenly seemed very distant. The school bell rings, and all of them leave for their classes. Colton stops Eddie in the hope that he can still save him from the wrong company, since he was the one who made Eddie hang out with them. He suggests Eddie shouldn't go to the party, considering what happened the last time, showing his arm in the sling. But Eddie doesn't listen to Colton and walks away. Ashley and her parents are getting ready to go to church. Ashley asks her mom if she should ask Colton to come. But to her surprise, Colton walks in right then, dressed smartly in a shirt and formal pants, asking whether he should wear a tie. Both women laugh with joy. After coming back from church, Colton helps his family set the dinner table. His mother asks them if they learned anything new from the sermon. Ashley recounts the lesson of repentance, where we pray for forgiveness to become free of our sins. Hearing this, Colton is lost in thought when Ashley takes the glasses from his hand, breaking his thought chain. Once alone in his room, Colton introspects and then turns to pray at his bedside. After a very long time, he prays for forgiveness for all he has done wrong. The next day Colton visits Sarah at her home. Sarah still holds the resentment and keeps her answers to monosyllables. He explains that he heard she had gotten out of the hospital, and he hadn't seen her in school, so he thought of checking on her. She tells him she will join the school this week. Almost fighting back the tears, Colton says he is sorry for what he did to her. Sarah asks him if what he said to her in the hospital about passing away, and being told to stop what he was doing was true. Colton is surprised she heard him and then tells her that it is the truth, and that he doesn't know what to do. Nobody understands him, and he feels awful for everything that has happened, and apologizes again to Sarah. Sarah accepts his apology. He is amazed as he didn't expect Sarah to forgive him that easily. Sarah clarifies she's not forgiven him yet, but she knows he is not lying. He admits it feels good after apologizing to her. She suggests he makes amends with all the other people he has hurt. That night Colton makes a list of all the people he needs to apologize to. The next day at school, he tries to talk to Dallin. He tries to apologize, but he has hurt Dallin more than he could have apprehended. Dallin is angry at Colton not just for embarrassing him in front of his friends but more for his friend Sarah, who won't be able to play tennis the entire year and will miss the chance in the elite tennis program this summer. Colton has hurt people in a manner that a simple apology can't make things right, and he realizes this too. The group of his old friends meets Colton in the corridor. They are bunking classes and asking Colton to come. But Colton refuses, saying his arm still hurts. His friends don't care and walk away, but Colton calls Eddie, asking him not to go with John and Blake as they can get him in trouble. Eddie doesn't understand because Colton is one of them. Colton explains that when he was with them, they had a bad influence on him, resulting in the mishap. He has been rude to everybody, and now no one trusts him. He feels terrible for dragging Eddie into all this and suggests he get better friends. But Eddie is adamant. Now that he is accepted in the group, he won't go against his friends, so he dismisses Colton and walks away. Sarah is leaving for physical therapy as her mom helps her get to the car. She asks Sarah to wait till she grabs her laptop. Colton comes to talk to Sarah and tells her that he finally understands what she was trying to tell him. It is not just about apologizing, one has to go beyond that. After talking to Sarah and Dallin and reading the Bible, he has understood the gist of making amends. So he thought of starting with Sarah and showed her a brand new tennis racket he got. Since he doesn't know much about tennis, gaining Sarah's approval for the choice of racket makes him feel good that he wasn't ripped off by the salesman. He doesn't want to be the one to spoil her dreams, so he wants to help her. Sarah points out that he too is in no shape to play because of his arm injury. He assures his arm will heal in a few weeks. Up until now, Sarah thought he was joking but seeing the resolve on his face, she realizes he is being serious. Sarah agrees to take his help and tells him about the people coming for the Clairville tennis program, and that she wants to be strong enough for them when they arrive. It is going to be a challenge because right now, her leg has no strength. Colton assures they will work on that. Sarah invites him to the youth activity the next day. Colton is unsure if anybody would want him there, but Sarah wants him to be there. Colton is amazed at how wonderful Sarah is. Colton meets Sarah on the ground the next day. She is sitting under the shade of the tree while her friends play frisbee. Colton asks why she came, when she can't even play. Sarah explains that playing is not the only reason she comes to these games. She is there to be with her people where she can be herself. Colton is learning new lessons of socialization, as Sarah tells him that one doesn't have to be in the middle of everything to enjoy it. Colton doesn't seem to understand it. 
So Sarah gives him the example of hockey that he can enjoy a game just by watching it. For Colton, hockey is all about winning and the adrenaline rush he gets. Also, when the people cheer for him, and he is carried on the shoulders after winning the game, is what makes him enjoy hockey. Sarah understands Colton's way of enjoying a game. So she tells him her way of looking at the sport she plays. When she plays tennis, she is solely responsible for winning or losing, and she cannot blame anybody for her mistakes. So when she wins, she can feel proud of herself without gloating. Colton's arm is much better, and he doesn't have to wear the sling anymore. He meets his friends at school who try to take him along with them, but he refuses. This time his friends bully him for acting like every other kid in school. They even push him and throw his bag. Dallin witnesses everything. Colton goes to his workplace and greets Amy and Mike, the owner of the cafe. He hands Mike $500, saying he would take money every now and then, instead of putting it into the machine. He also apologizes for stealing. Mike forgives him for his honesty. Before bed, Colton looks at the list and feels content after apologizing. He then kneels and prays. Ashley walks into his room and asks him what he's doing. She is astonished as she has never seen him kneel. He replies he is praying. As Ashley starts leaving, Colton stops her and tells her that he owes her some money, because he used to take it from her room. Ashley asks him how he knew where she kept it. Colton says it is pretty obvious, but he is short on cash right now. He promises to pay her back soon. This encourages her to finally open a bank account for herself. Sarah doesn't have to use crutches anymore, and she feels relieved after being confined in the cast and walking with the crutches for so long. Her mom advises her to go easy on her leg and not jump straight into tennis practice. She asks her not to worry as Colton is helping her, and she won't overdo it. Colton's dad finds Colton studying in the living room. He is glad that Colton is making efforts. He really has changed after the accident. His dad lets him know that if he ever needs him or his mom, they will always be there for him. His dad is proud of him for making so much progress. Colton is helping Sarah at the tennis court. Blake and others come to make fun of him, but he dismisses them. Sarah tells him she is used to ignoring their remarks. For Colton, they are still his friends, but he does not like what they do, so he doesn't participate. He can't do anything about John and Blake but feels guilty for dragging Eddie into this. Eddie was a sincere kid before Colton made him join his gang. No matter how much he tries to talk to Eddie, he can't seem to get through to him. He now understands how his parents felt when they tried to talk to Colton about his company. He asks Sarah if she can give him some ideas to help Eddie. Sarah promises she'll think of something. She also shares that Coach Miller thinks she won't be ready for Clairval. Colton is confident they'll pull through. They soon start training together. Things get better with time. Colton is able to study and maintain a good relationship with everybody around him. He and Sarah become good friends. He sometimes looks at his old gang, still making fun of others and wasting time, and he cannot help but think of ways he can help them. Sarah is getting better day by day, but she thinks she still needs a lot of work to do. After practice, she asks Colton how he feels now that he has worked so hard to mend his ways. He says he feels good but thinks Eddie, Blake, and John hate him. They may never truly understand him. So Sarah asks him how it felt when he had the vision in the hospital. He admits it was frightening. He just wanted to give up on life or hide forever, because hearing warnings about everything he had done wrong all at once was too much to take in. Even though he had a voice in the back of his head telling him not to do it, he still mistreated everybody around him. After listening to the voice in the hospital, he knew what he had to do when he woke up. Sarah listens to him intently and admits he has changed and she likes the new him. Sarah has practiced sessions with Coach Miller, but she can't perform well, which makes her concerned. Colton goes to talk to Mr. Cooper and confesses all he has done. Mr. Cooper already knew everything, but let Colton talk and get everything off his chest. Colton comes back home and sits with his mother. He asks her if the guilt ever goes away because even though he apologizes to everybody, he cannot stop feeling guilty. His mom tells him that sometimes the most challenging part is to forgive oneself. He asks how to do that. She replies that it takes time and the memories don't go away. But one morning he will wake up, and these memories won't hurt him anymore. He feels good after talking to her and thanks her for listening. Sarah tries talking to Eddie one morning while going to school. But he doesn't listen to her and says she is making a mistake by believing Colton, because he is not what she thinks he is. Sarah defends Colton, saying he has changed, but Eddie is not interested in listening to anything she has to say. Having no choice, she asks him if he is happy being who he is. He looks at her contemptuously and walks away without saying anything. Sarah and Colton are practicing, but Colton cannot put his mind to the game and asks her if they can do something he is good at. They go to an ice skating rink, and Colton teaches Sarah to skate. He asks her how she feels about the upcoming game. She is nervous. She mentions meeting Eddie the other day, but he wouldn't listen. Colton speaks on behalf of his group that listening has been their weak point. They agree that Eddie has to figure out on his own that what others think of him is not important. Suddenly Colton slips and falls flat on his back, and they both share a laugh. Today is a big day for Sarah as it is her first game after the accident. 
Her mom promises to come for the match. After school, Colton also promises to be there before the match starts. They meet Eddie again, but he ignores them, and John and Blake are not happy either. Soon the game begins, and Coach Miller encourages Sarah to give her best. Sarah doesn't head on a good start. She misses many serves at first. She tries to recover in the middle but ultimately loses to her opponent. Colton meets her the next day on the bridge. She is still thinking about yesterday's match. Colton cheers her up and says she just got scared. He still feels that she would have done much better if it were not for him. She doesn't blame Colton and apologizes for telling on him last year about the statue at the church. She also feels guilty for humiliating him in front of everybody. Colton knows she didn't mean to do it, and he could have handled things better. He assures her she doesn't need to apologize to him for anything. They spend some more time there on the bridge in silence. The next day onwards, Sarah's rigorous training starts with Coach Miller and Colton asks Dallin, Liz, and Ashley to join him to cheer her. Colton takes every chance to encourage Sarah. Even during their run, Colton asks her to be positive and believe in herself. He suggests they celebrate after her game. When she agrees, grabbing the opportunity, he quickly calls it a date. On the big day, Sarah is all over the place. Her mom tries to calm her down and asks her to enjoy herself rather than worry about winning or losing. She reaches the venue early and fills her water bottle when Blake, John, and Eddie surround her. They are not happy that Colton is now on her side, so to take revenge, they shut her inside one of the rooms and lock it from the outside. Colton is waiting for Sarah, but when she doesn't turn up at the time she said she would, he gets worried and starts asking people around. He then runs into Blake and others and sees Sarah's racket with them. He instantly knows they have something to do with her disappearance. So he asks where Sarah is, but they act nonchalantly and start mistreating him. Colton finally gives them a piece of his mind saying they were drunk that night and could have hurt Sarah very badly. But Blake only cares about his license being revoked for an entire year. Colton warns Eddie it won't take time for them to replace him too. Colton runs inside the school to look for Sarah, as the bullies won't tell him what they did with her. Sarah's mom is also worried and tries calling her. The members from Clairville are there, and the match is about to start, but Sarah is nowhere to be found. Colton is still looking and calling out her name when Eddie comes running and takes him to where they locked Sarah. They soon reach the room, and Eddie unlocks it. Sarah rushes out and hugs Colton. He hands her the racket and asks her to go. After she has left, Colton appreciates Eddie for making the right decision. She manages to make it to the match on time. Sarah has a slow start as her opponent gains score, but she soon catches up. During her break, Colton cheers her that she's doing great, but as they are approaching the end, she is getting nervous, which is making her lose focus. So he assures her there is nothing that can stop her. With a new resolve, she returns to the court and looks at the scoreboard. She just needs to win one more game to win the entire match. Sarah gets very nervous and loses points initially but soon gains confidence. Coach Miller keeps encouraging her throughout the game. And one last time, Sarah tells herself she can do it and plays with all her heart, making her the winner of the match. Her mom, Dallin, and Liz run to the court to hug her and congratulate her. Coach Miller tells her the good news that she grabbed the attention of the people from Clairville and can expect an invitation to their summer program. She is thrilled to hear this news. Colton also comes to congratulate her, and she hugs him, and he reminds her that their celebration is due. She wonders where they should go. He is ready to take her anywhere she wants. 